Last year, two teenagers called, I'm not even going to attempt that, discovered a new proof for Pythagoras' theorem, just in case there were some people out there who still, for some reason, weren't entirely convinced. And now, they've just came up with four new proofs. So, I know to most people, this is not exciting whatsoever, but to, to some math nerds out there, you might be interested to see how they've proved Pythagoras' theorem, because they're doing it in a geometric way, in a way in which mathematicians previously thought was impossible. I was curious enough to try and read the paper and find out how they proved Pythagoras' theorem, and I was met with this. Oh, how lovely, a wall of symbols. Now, I actually understand what these symbols mean because I'm studying maths at university, unfortunately. So, I'm going to explain to you what these symbols mean and how to actually prove Pythagoras' theorem without using Pythagoras' theorem. Let's start with a right angle triangle. I'll put the side A over here and B over here. C is going to be here. So, this can be angle beta and this can be angle alpha and this can be our right angle, so we want to establish that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect this like so, so that we can create an isosceles triangle which has the same angles, the same right angle and the same side lengths here. Now we've got an isosceles triangle, I'm going to apply the law of sines. If you don't know, the law of sines states that opposite sides and opposite angles have this relationship with each other. So here's this angle 2 alpha. So sine 2 alpha over the opposite side, which is 2a. And that is the same as the relationship between this side and this angle. Or we can even pick this side and this angle. It doesn't matter which. Let's go with this one here. So sine beta over and then this opposite side is C, and these two are the same as each other. Now, sine beta is also equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right, because of Sokotoa. So sine beta, this angle, is equal to the opposite side, which is B, over the hypotenuse, which is C, and then over C again. So this is just B over C squared. So we've got sine 2 alpha over 2a equals b over c squared. Now I'm just going to leave this as it is here. Sine 2 alpha equals 2ab over c squared. Okay, we've established this. I'm just going to take this fact and leave it in the corner. Now that we've established sine 2 alpha equals 2ab over c squared, I want to establish sine of beta minus alpha, and you'll see why later, okay? So beta minus alpha, first let's focus on beta minus alpha. We know that alpha plus beta plus 90 is going to be 180 because this is the angles in a triangle add to 180, right? So we're going to subtract 90 from both sides and we get alpha plus beta equals 90, therefore beta must equal 90 minus alpha. So if we subtract, if we substitute this into our original thing that we wanted, we get sine of beta, which is 90 minus alpha minus alpha again, which is sine of 90 minus 2 alpha. Now, sine of 90 minus 2 alpha, this is the same as cosine, because 90 minus anything turns it into a cosine, cosine of 2 alpha. And using our trig identities, we know that cosine of 2 alpha, this is a double angle formula, is cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. So sine beta minus alpha is just cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. And we know that cosine alpha is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is this side here, B, over the hypotenuse C. So this is just B over C and then we square it, and then we subtract sine, which is the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, A over C, squared. So this is B squared over C squared minus A squared over C squared, 
which because they both have the same denominator, we can just put them together, b squared minus a squared over c squared. Now you might get a bit excited thinking, oh, we're getting close. We are nowhere near close. This is just the start of the proof. Now we're gonna actually move on to the geometric, the geometry side of the proof. But just remember, sine beta minus alpha is equal to b squared minus a squared over c squared. Now I'm gonna take our right angle triangle and extend it along here to create a new point D. Now this point is the point such that when you create a line here, this angle is the same as this angle here. So these two angles are the same, which means that the whole angle is two alpha. And that means that this here is gonna be 180 minus beta because those lie on a straight line. And that means that alpha plus 180 minus beta plus whatever this angle is here, we can call it gamma for now, plus gamma is gonna equal 180 because all three angles in a triangle add up to 180. And we can cancel out 180 from both sides. So we get alpha minus beta plus gamma equals, uh, equals zero, sorry. So we get that gamma must equal, if we add on beta and then subtract alpha beta minus alpha so we can replace that with beta minus alpha now we're going to apply the law of sines to this entire right triangle a c d so that means that the sine of this angle two alpha is going to equal sorry over this which is c d is going to be the same as the angle sine beta minus alpha over the opposite side, b. Now very conveniently, we've worked out what is sine to alpha and what is sine beta minus alpha, so we can just substitute those in. Sine to alpha is two ab over c squared. We don't know what cd is, so we'll leave that as is. And that is the same as sine beta minus alpha, which is b squared minus a squared over c squared over b. Now it's gonna get very messy here with the fractions on top of fractions. So let's multiply by CD and also multiply by B. So if we multiply by B on the left hand side, we get two AB squared over C squared. And then if we multiply by CD on the right hand side, we get B squared minus A squared over C squared. And then we multiply by CD. Now we have to find CD on its own. Well, first of all, we notice that we can cancel off the c squared. So to find cd on its own, we just need to divide by b squared minus a squared. So we get two a b squared over b squared minus a squared equals cd. Now that we know what cd is, we can find bd because bd is equal to whatever cd is, subtract a because this is bd and then we're subtracting off a and we should be left with whatever this is, BD. So BD is equal to 2AB squared over B squared minus A squared minus A. Now we need to make the denominator the same in order to do this subtraction. So if we multiply everything by this denominator on the right here with this A, we get 2ab squared over b squared minus a squared, subtract a lots of b squared minus a squared over b squared minus a squared, then we can expand this out. So we get 2ab squared minus ab squared minus, uh, plus, sorry, plus a cubed all over b squared minus a squared. Now this 2ab squared minus 1ab squared these are the same here, so we can just subtract those from each other and we get one lot of AB squared. And then we've also got this common term A in both sides. So we've got AB squared plus A cubed. So we can factor out A and we get A lots of B squared plus A squared over B squared minus A squared. Now we're gonna apply the law of sines to this triangle here. So the law of sines, we're gonna use this side, BD, and the opposite uh, angle, alpha. So BD over sine of the opposite angle, alpha, is equal to, and then we're gonna use this side here, the hypotenuse, C 
over the opposite angle sine beta minus alpha. Sine alpha is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's A over C. And then sine beta minus alpha is b squared minus a squared over c squared. So now I'm continuing up here, we can do bd is equal to, well, we've got to multiply by a over c. So it's a over c, lots of c over b squared minus a squared over c squared. Now this is a very complicated fraction, but the, uh, the bottom fraction flips around because we're dividing by a fraction and it works with the same rules of uh, keep change flip. So we get BD equals C cubed because this is going to flip to the top over B squared minus A squared multiplied by A over C which is this cancels with one of these so we get C squared on top and then we get an A on top over B squared minus A squared. Now finally, you may have seen it already, we've just calculated that BD is this and BD is this. So we're gonna make those equal to each other. So BD equals C squared A over B squared minus A squared, uh, which is the same as that. Now obviously we can cancel out the two denominators. So we get C squared A equals A lots of A squared plus B squared. And then as you can see, we can assume that A is non-zero, so we can cancel out the A's. And finally, we get C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Or as it's more commonly written, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Oh yeah, by the way, big thank you to Generic Pointer Device, the new channel member. If you want to support the channel, there's a join button next to the subscribe button. Uh, you can click it if you want, and if you don't, then uh, I suppose you can piss off.